Hello and welcome to another episode of GSE Talk. My name is Sudhi Vaid and joining me today is one of the most reputed and experienced coaches in the history of Indian football. He started his coaching journey with Shillong Lajong and moved on to work with Northeast United, Kerala Blasters, Odisha FC and now is the technical director of the reigning champions of Indian Super League, Hyderabad FC. Welcome to the show Thang Boy Singh Talk. Thank you very much, Shurbi. That was a very kind and lengthy introduction. But what I like was the last part, the reigning champion. Well, hopefully this season two, we go forward and try to achieve that. Good to be here. Yes. Thank you so much, Shurbi. It's a pleasure to have you here. So, um, now, when we watch a football match, as a viewer, we look at a particular player and we say, oh, what a talent he is. But for you, it's the other way around. You go out there and pet talent. So, take us through the process of talent spotting and scouting you know i mean the talent scouting on a wider sense it has very very become high tech very organized yeah but if you speak about the best player of india the present captain sunil chetri where was he scouted from you might not find much document about that so you know if you speak about imb jn you yeah. know that time there was no talent spotters talent scouters but at the moment, yeah. yes, we have a very organized, every club, every academy, whether ISL, I-League, even second division, they have a proper system of scouting. Well, yeah. for me, you know, uh, there might be videos around for uh, talents coming out, you know, online. This is the time for social medias. But for me personally, I always would like to go myself on record live and watch the kid. Okay. Here say messages from the coaches, from friends, fine. But personally, yeah. I would definitely go to the place where the child, where the players, where the boy or girl belongs to, you know, meet them yeah. if possible, talk to them and see them play. That's my way of, you know, uh, identifying talent so far. Uh, or bring them to the place where we work, where, you know, interact with them, train with them for a few days. I think that for me is the key to better understand at, of what talent the boy or the girl really is. Oh, that's nice. And it has really worked for you, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. A apart from that, of course, uh, you know, we have a group of boys coming in and playing with us. And, you know, that's the way, as they yeah. say, many coaches would believe that the best example of finding a talent is see them play. So yeah. I think the trend has not changed. And it should not be, I say, because game is what really, really, you know, shows. And that's where the boy exhibits or the girl exhibits what they're really made of. Yeah, true that. But tell me, with so many technologies coming in, does AI and ML help in this process? See, definitely. If you're speaking about uh, the European or the other, you know, uh, higher, yeah. I, I'm not saying India is te techno Soviet behind in those, but in the footballing term, in football, maybe we are not that exposed yet. Yeah. But definitely AI, ML, definitely they help. But if you're speaking of the Indian context, how many of us are able to get grabs that those technology, you know? Yeah. So that's the question. Uh, where, where, where we have to find ourselves and realize that, okay, we have the facility, but having the facility is fine. Having the technology is fine. Yeah. But are we able to use the technology to the maximum? That mm. is important. It's just yeah. like, a, like, like a, having the latest phone, but you don't know the functions, no? So mm. I think it's yeah. a combination. It is very, very helpful. I think that is the way forward where every team, top teams are going forward, you know? Yeah. If you see every team has a sports scientist department, every team has a strength and conditioning department, you know? Yeah. And specializations are there in every department. Definitely AI is one going forward, which is, I think many teams, top teams are using it. In India, I'm not sure how many are doing that. Definitely these are the areas I think we need to explore more and bring yeah. it to a system so that, hey, you know, it's always helpful to, to get uh, yeah. good ideas from, from, from technology. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. But talking about, you know, how far football has come in India, but there are still a lot of non-structured football areas, non-structured football ecosystem. Do you think training can help uh, help it make better? Should we? I take it this way. Uh, we call it uh, non-structured, uh, non-organized football. But yeah. if you see the top players, if you yeah. say, example, the Neymar, if you take uh, Gabriel Jesus, they yeah. come from street football, you know? That yeah, is a very disorganized football. It's just, yeah. just work and play and play and play and play. 
So I think, uh, you know, to really, really to maximize the potential of the players, I think yeah. what is very, very important at the younger age, the, the, the grassroots or the youth is having very expert youth coaches, very good mm -hmm. grassroots coaches. Do we have those coaches? We do have, but are they enough? Yeah. It is not enough. Yeah. Because ISL senior leagues, senior competitions, senior coaches are not the ones who are developing these kids yeah. to be a better player. Yeah. The most important coaches for us, particularly in India, are the grassroots coaches, I yeah. believe, and the youth yeah. coaches, because that is where the boys and girls learn, relearn, test themselves, yeah. play, you know. Yeah. So that is the place where they try to develop their thought process, their yeah. decision making. So if the coaches there at that level are not good enough, will the players coming up will be that tactically sound, technically sound? Yeah. That's an area. That's an area we need to look into. So I believe that, you know, uh, organized football is fine, but sometimes we need to uh, see whether the other side of things are all, all helping us also. So I, I take it a little bit on, the, on those lines. Okay, okay. So we need to work on the grassroots level. And do you think that EdTech can help in that? Definitely, definitely. Now, this pandemic has shown us how much important is technology. Yeah. Especially for the students. Not yeah. only for, when I say students, I, I, I regard the young sportsmen, footballers, especially in, uh, for, for our topic. They are in the room, but with, with, the, with the support of Zoom, with the support of all those, uh, you know, uh, technology, they are being able to learn, they are being, show their skills to the coaches, learn from the coaches. So I think, you know, going forward, these things are going to be very, very important, you know. Yeah. And sometimes weather conditions, sometimes, you know, climate, sometimes all these yeah. are not a hindrance anymore because we have a system where immediately you can just so showcase your work, showcase your talent, discuss yeah. your doubts, clear your doubts. So I think, yeah, it's, it's very, very important on those lines at the moment. Yeah, very key. Yeah. And we've seen that football is rising in India. We've seen that people are promoting football on each level. So where do you visualize the competition or the, um, the growth or exposure part of football at this moment in India? Uh, one of the saddest part, I would say, in spite of football becoming one of the most popular, if not the yeah. first, definitely the second most popular sport in okay. India, yeah. but should be pandemic, non-pandemic, the competitions are very less. Yeah. We keep on saying, we have said it five years back, we have said it six years back. The boys, the girls, the kids doesn't have enough competitions. Yeah. Now, it's easy to talk, but the people are, you know, who are, who are stakeholders, who are uh, important for organizing these tournaments have to do more. And even yeah. the academies, even the clubs, uh, any level, have to take more initiative in, you know, getting more opportunity for the kids to play. Yeah. Say for example, say for example, a young player, uh, hmm. say we have a team under 13, under 15, under 18. That's, that's yeah. the criteria for ISL, I league teams. But how many yeah. matches these kids are playing? It's very, very less. It's very, very less. So we need to, competitions has to be more, you know? Hmm. It, it's, it, it not necessarily be a very, very high, or highly organized, you know, expensive. But if you plan well, yeah. if you connect to people around nearby, okay, travel is expensive, stakes are expensive. But yeah. as the saying goes, if there is a will, there is always a way. Really. So I think initiative has to come from everyone around, not only yeah. the organizers, even from the coaches like us. Yeah. We have yeah. to say, that, hey, if there's a team nearby, can we play? Can we come and play with you? Can you mm -hmm. come and play with us? You know, if they're interest, if the organizers in as well, I think the kids need more competitions. Yeah. Why I'm saying this, Surbi, is that we have so many players, young players in ISL, example, yeah. who are not getting a chance because as a head coach, you are responsible for performance. If your team yeah. doesn't do well, then you might be sacked, for example. So yeah. will you give a chance to a young, talented player or you will rely on an experienced player to win matches? So yeah. what happens is that the young boy, first season, he doesn't get a chance. Second season, doesn't get a chance. Then what happened to those boys? Should we blame yeah. them? No. We have to the good thing now is that we have, uh, say, for example, I'm speaking about on the context of ISL, we have a reserve developmental league, which is very good. Yeah. All the yeah. boys are getting chance. Also, those sort of competitions are much, much needed of the art. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. And, you know, talking about Hyderabad F FC and ISL, because um, you've seen so much of improvement in the league. 
there are programs that the leagues leagues clubs are also making for example train the trainers or um, you know picking up localites and finding talent in the local area and you know promoting them how how do you think that will help or promote the game if i relate back to if i relate back to the i league days where i was working yeah. uh my management that time always tell me young boy if we have a local boy and yeah. equally equally you know uh in terms of talent everything if they equal play the local yeah. boy yeah why because we need the local connections if suppose we are a team from hyderabad for example yeah. we definitely want players from hyderabad local local boys to play yeah. if not at the moment very soon that's had been our you know our intention that has been uh, what we are trying to do for that we need players coming at that level at that quality to you know breed them into our 18s to breed them into our reserves then progress to the isl we can't bring somebody who is not good enough to the isl that won't make justice yeah. to the club or to the player so i think uh, as per the criteria given by aiff uh 30% has to be a local you know uh, players yeah. i think that is very yeah. good because yeah. you belong to one particular state and if you're going to play from that region then you know well that connection from the public from the fans even from the sponsorship view for side of view i think is very very important you have local talents but for that the local talents of the particular state particular region has to work in a very very systematic way a lot of grassroots yeah. programs are happening a lot of young players are there the number of uh, play, uh, players wanting to play football has increased but again should we we come back do we yeah. have enough good teachers at that level exactly yeah. when i say teachers relate to coaches yeah if you don't have good teachers then it's very difficult that you know the players we produce year after year might be at the level which is necessary for the, yeah. you know at the level of world football or you know asian mm -hmm. football at the moment yeah and when you talk about isl and i leagues in particular we've seen the development we've seen how how it has impacted the society of football as a whole do you think they can act as a torch bearers for women's football youth development definitely definitely when you touch a very very valid point women's football yeah. there if you see the fifa rankings of the men's and women's hey I mean, yeah. we have to look we have to look up at the women in the sense that <laughs> their, their their ranking is much much higher than the men's you know? yeah uh, yeah so i think it, it it's very important that we have to uh, build a very good ecosystem where you know not only men's but women's and girls football is also uh you know uh yeah. push forward uh unfortunately at the moment situations are such but some opportunities are being taken away but definitely women's football i have seen with my i haven't i even coached a women's team long time back but if you ask me i'm not an expert in women's more on the men but definitely uh this type of uh you know competitions for the girls coming up i think definitely will help and for the society as a whole i think it's very very important you know because talent is everywhere mm -hmm. whether you are a male or a female or a boy or girl i think equal opportunity because we have seen that girls ladki look kisi se kam nahi hai so why not the opportunity right yeah 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 and yes. you never know we might see women's fifa football world cup team women's team reaching fifa world cup before men's team you never know as they say that. as they say inshallah yeah, as they say inshallah and we hope it does it does true True, true true yeah true. i'm talking about you as as a coach you started with youth development and moved on to i leagues and then finally to isl and that too in a decade's time so tell us what is your secret mantra well i think uh kehta na ki uh of course until unless you have that uh, passion and desire for a particular yeah. sports or what you want to do in life i think it's not it's difficult so one thing that really helped me was my own personal passion to do something in football my aim was to become a professional footballer uh, but i could not reach there but well as a professional coach my intention my aim has been always to give opportunity to the young players try to help yeah. them not only on the pitch off the pitch or too yeah, the way you know they they should okay we can't advise them much because these day kids are much much smarter than us but yeah. trying to build a system around them which will propel them to be a better footballer as well as a better human being as per, as for the society i think ultimately mm. sports is great but ultimately we are in a living society 
So our mm. ultimate aim is to build people, um, young players, when they go a bit older, to be useful more to the society, you know, they, so they can contribute back. So off the field, on the field is very, very equally important, I would say. For me, yeah, passion. And I had, of course, parents, hand on top, blessings. And I had mm. some right people around me, surrounding me, who has pushed me, who has helped me, who has guided me. It will be a long story if I'm going to name the yeah. names, but they know who they are, I believe. Yeah. And yes, the jail being very inquisitive of trying to know things, you know, mm. because things change. If you yeah. think that uh, I have done my pro license 2013, so I know still I'm, I can know. You got to adapt, you got to readapt, you got to change yourself, you know. Things have changed. Agar way soch reke rehenge to fir yeah. So it's it's being very visionary in terms of trying to improve yourself. And of course, having the right people around you, not much, but the right people around you who can criticize you, who can push you, who can support you. Yeah. So I think this few things has really helped me, you know, as a coach. And yes, nothing has been achieved yet, but still a long way to go. The intention is always to help the country as much as we can. And in my own way, trying to develop Indian football, because that's in the heart. Yeah. And you're surely making a lot of dreams come true. But I've heard that you <laughs> you are one of the rare coaches in India who is multilingual. How does that help you with team bonding? Because, you know, when you have that local connect, it's easier to bond with someone. Uh, I think, uh, again, should we, uh, this is something you need to push yourself to learn. Say, for example, when I was in walking Shillong, Lejong, I had yeah. uh, players from different areas. My yeah. physio was a Bengali. You know, and my team manager was a, a Nepali, for example, you know, and the doctor was mm -hmm. a local guy, Kasi, you know, my assistant coach was a Kasi. So, and I have players from Manipur, I had players, Vishal Kate, for example, who is playing for now is Bengal. Yeah. He was from, you know, another state. So I have to speak in Hindi. I speak to my physio in Bengal, hey, for example. <laughs> then my, my manager is there, hey, Biru, Chito Goro, Subsistence Chito, Ali Chancha. So I think, uh, my maybe my interest in learning languages i i try i tend to take few notes you know the common words and play yeah. around it and and you know trying to ask people how how it's pronounced and all i think the initiative has to come from yourself it's not given yeah so but in football whether you're in the pitch we're off the pitch whether you're talking to the players whether you're talking to the public whether you're talking to yeah. the management the connection is much higher improve much if you relate to them in the language that is the yeah. of factor. Yeah. So yeah. knowing that I try to, you know, write notes in mobile, you know, save some words, you know. So those <laughs> tidbits I do and try to, if I see somebody a Malayali, I try to speak them in Malayali a few words, you know. So that way yeah. I think maybe constant trying to improve. That is that that is what I've been doing. So yeah, yeah. few languages I can speak. Not all, but there are few. Oh, that's really nice. Learn, 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 connect, connect, connect. G. So right. what's what's that one message apart from this? Obviously, what's that one advice that you will give to a coach that is into youth development? See, uh, youth development is a very very special job. Yeah. If I'm allowed to take one name here, yeah. uh, from whom I've learned, is a very very great youth developer which Indian have seen. India have seen. He is a British, but American, uh, live in America. His name is Mr. Colin Tall. Okay. If you ask JJ, if you ask uh, Pritam Kotal, if you ask Gurpreet Singh Sandhu, if you ask Sandesh Jingan, if you mm. ask uh, uh, many other players who has helped him along, there might be many mm. coaches, but, but one of the greatest youth developer was Mr. Colin Tall. His okay. principles uh, mm. should be, I would like to mention mm. here, was... You know, trying to discipline the boys, but not in a very, you know, the headmaster way of thing. Yeah. Headmaster way of thing. You, you keep a boundary, but make the players feel that, hey, I am there for you. I can chide you. I can scold you. But at the end of the day, my greatest interest is to develop you as a player. Yeah. When this thought process is understood by the players, then they'll buy your thoughts. They'll buy your system. They'll buy your, you know, way of uh, advices. So he was a guy who could really convince. If you ask any players around who have uh, coached, who have been coached by him, people have him high regard. Why? It is because of the system. And 
he was very meticulous in his planning, everyday planning, mm. the way he treat the staff, the way he treat the medical team, the way he connect with the people, you know? So yeah. that way, I think you development coaches, one mm. is passion, definitely. The other is you have to be a person who is approachable, but yeah. at not, not easily in the sense that, you know, they should not come and say all the troubles, all the problems there. Mm. But if they know that you are a person who can, can rely to, who are trustworthy, then definitely yeah. kids will. Apart from that, the other things like discipline, on time, blah, 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 all these things are secondary. <laughs> but as okay. a person, yeah. kids see you as something whom they can trust, yeah. they can learn and they can develop. That is an, a key area for all the young coaches. Don't be, you know, as you have to call, start from the grassroots, mm -hmm. work around your ways, not thinking yeah. that, oh, I've worked in grassroots, now I need to go 18. Oh, uh, one year I work in it, no, I have to be in the, uh, in the I league. Then, uh, well, I stay as yeah. I think that yeah. is the way to grow forward. Learn, yeah. adapt, you know, ask. Yeah. So that is, we have to wait our time because football has become such a very, very important system in our society. There, if you're very truthful, if you're very trustworthy, if you work hard, there is yeah. always a place for everybody. Yeah. So one step at a time, right? Exactly. Sort of. One step at right a time. Way. You put it yeah. right <laughs> So um, for all the coaches that are watching you right now, that are learning from you, tell them what are the five major areas that they should emphasize <laughs> on while coaching or while, you know, um, developing youth of this country. Well, I mean, the, if you ask me, there may be a lot of points, yeah. but from my own little bit experience, what again, I might, re I might sound repetitive, but what I've experienced through, it might be different from other coaches, but for the young coaches who wants to follow this system or these ways, what can help them is that first of all, you have to believe in yourself. Yeah. You have to believe in yourself. Dunya kuch bhi kahe, log kuch bhi kahe, agar if you don't believe in yourself, apne par agar vishwas nahi hai, to aap kaise jao ga? Yeah. Work, aapke baap, work, aapke teachers, aapke tutors, so that okay. is one thing I really you know. I might not be a good player, but when I enter the ground, I should think that I'm one of I'm the best. Wo jo attitude, I'm not saying in the wrong way, but yeah. for the right approach, that believing in yourself is very, very important. Second point I would say is trying to find a good mentor. I'm not going the bookish way, I'm a little bit different way because these things yeah. are important too. Mentors can be through your parents, but parents, they want you to be doctors, they want to be engineers, they want to be an eye tech, footballers, less still. <laughs> but mentors can be your, some of your senior players, mentors can be your teachers, mentors can be, you know, there are a lot of mentors, football mentors at the moment. Try yeah. to find the right mentors. Not mentors, but the right mentors I'm speaking about. And after that, well, work starts. That is, you have to be very inquisitive. You have to be, you have to have the desire to improve yourself day in and day out. And yeah. for that, you need time. You have to spend time. You need to work out. You need to plan out. Yeah. easy name milta, So you have to be very, very yeah. hardworking, inquisitive, like I said. The other thing is, yeah. you have to be trustworthy. You have to be trustworthy, Switi. In life, whether it's relationships yeah. between a girlfriend and a boyfriend, whether mother, father, whether husbands, if there is no trust, it is very difficult. Yeah. The trust factor that you built with your superiors, with your owners, with your, you know, the companies where you work, if the trust factor is mm -hmm. not there, I think that doesn't last. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last but not the least, I would say is try to stay positive always. Yeah. Try to stay positive. It is very difficult, Sylvia. I'm, I'm just maybe sounding a little bit maybe scholastic, but I think uh, as much as possible, nobody is happy 100% all the way, all the time. Not possible mm -hmm. at all. We have to take, be able to take things in our stride. Okay, defeats, sad moments, problems, it will be there. It is part of yeah. our life. So the more we are able to accept these things and overcome them as quickly as possible, yeah. then I think maybe we, are, we will be able to maybe achieve more something on life. Yeah. So these few things, few points I can mention. Last but not the least, as you mentioned that you have to be positive, not all the time is it possible, but how do you encourage yourself after a defeat or after a setback? Yeah, that is that is not easy. So we're in a professional setup where if you are a youth coach or if you are a grassroots coach, their results 
are not uh, you know really uh, immediately wanted you know it's not yeah. immediately result oriented but if you're in a professional setup i think you know it, it is always after a lose after a loss uh, if you if you lose a game it's always tough but again you know you have to be be able to you know say sort of switch off from work and uh, yeah. family too if you have a family man or family with uh, if you are not unmarried with the parents also you should be able to set a boundary where you can a little bit switch off from other things which is very difficult because yeah. all the successful coaches has been you know sort of cavaliers they are always on to their game you know 100 you know bibi hai to bibi ko bhul gaya girlfriend hai to usko yaad nahi example hota hai lekin lekin there should be a time where you, you should be able to switch off otherwise what happens yeah. the stress that's why if you see all the football coaches they all have gray hair why that is stress <laughs> that is stress yeah. so yeah. switching off sometimes is very very important and sometimes depend upon different people some people like to pray some people like to just switch off then you know go around some people like to switch off on music and all so these are some areas or watch these days no need to go to movies you have netflix everything whatever can boost you a little bit you know is very important and but yeah. last but not the most important is family so f- the support of family is very mm-hmm. very important if you, if you have that i think things should be okay yeah. yeah so as you mentioned everything starts with believing in yourself and thank you so much for joining us it was a pleasure to have you here Uh, it was my pleasure thank you to you thank you to dr anmol and hopefully we continue this journey yeah thank-